Morning, everyone. Well, it's morning for me here on the central coast of California. Welcome to Wisdom Wednesdays number one. This is the first one of what's going to be a series. And as I was in meditation yesterday asking what the topic should be for today, um, what came through was the dark goddess and <clears throat> the importance of the dark goddess in understanding the wholeness of the divine feminine. And in this time of the return of the divine feminine with this recent astrological shift, I think this is a really important topic for us and for women, for us to reclaim our whole selves as well. So we are going to actually start with some grounding and centering just to get ourselves connected in with Mother Earth and with spirit. And then I will dive in and I would be happy to see your comments and respond. Let me actually just close out of my email here so it's not interfering with uh, the broadcast bandwidth. Okay, so I'm inviting us all to just close our eyes and connect first with the breath. Breathing deeply into the belly, consciously and deliberately, slowing and deepening our breath. Breath is life, and as we go through our day, we often start breathing more shallowly, and that can actually lead to more stress. So let's breathe deeply. That's the beginning of our process of getting ourselves grounded and centered. So feeling the belly soften and breathing deeply into the belly. <sighs> and bringing our awareness to our feet and creating an imaginal grounding trunk that is going to extend down through all the layers of earth, make it as wide as, the, as your torso. And all you have to do is imagine this. This is how our imaginal realm works and how intuition works through the realm of the imagination. So seeing that grounding trunk extending down through all the layers of earth and water and rock to the very center of Mother Earth, the molten iron crystal at her core, and see that grounding trunk wrap around the molten iron crystal three times. And then see in your mind's eye and feel a beautiful surge of golden nurturing earth energy rising up your grounding trunk, coming in through the soles of your feet filling the body and then fountaining out the tops of our heads to create a beautiful golden bubble all around us, at least three feet in all directions. And know that this energy is healing and protective and nourishing. This is the gift of our Mother Earth. Her energy is always available to us. And when we do this grounding, this connecting in with Mother Earth, it brings us another degree of calm and centeredness and a feeling of being safe on the Earth. So now I invite you to bring your awareness out to the universe, to the center of all creation, which we can think of as the cosmic womb of the universe and draw in a crystalline golden white light from there through our soul stars, through our sun, to see and feel that coming in through our upper chakras and the tops of our heads to flow down through our bodies and out the bottoms of our feet to spiral through the earth energy so that we are in a double, double, tube torus, which is a certain form of energy flow that our energy field generally takes, <clears throat> of combined cosmic divine energy and divine mother earth energy. So continuing to just breathe deeply and allow these energies to flow with the intention that this divine energy is healing and clearing 
helping us release and let go of what no longer serves, thought forms that don't serve, physical diseases, issues that we have been dealing with in our lives. And then also just imagine that you are like a magnet and you're going to draw back to yourself any parts of yourself that have been scattered out anywhere in the universe with other people, at work, and simply draw them back to you like a magnet draws iron filings. And feel all those parts of yourself reintegrating and coming back home, coming back in to your physical body and energy field. And continue as we go through this, this time of Wisdom Wednesdays together. Uh, continue to feel that energy just flowing and flowing through. So hi, Jade. Hi, Floriana. Wonderful to see you. We just did a grounding and centering meditation to just con get connected to Mother Earth, get grounded to Mother Earth and connected to Divine Mother Cosmos. So um, last week in my uh, Dove Oracle Priestess Level 3 training, which I'm doing, I was serving as the Oracle of the Day for our group. And part of what came through for me was information about the Dark Goddess and how important it is to integrate the Dark Goddess into uh, into our understanding of the divine feminine and to reclaim the dark goddess as a full partner and appropriate aspect of the goddess. And the night after, um, after uh, that channeling, I'm just checking in to see if there's some comments. I'm hearing dings. Um, I'm not going to see. Okay. Uh, I actually watched the movie Moana, the Disney movie Moana, for the first time. <laughs> and it is a, an absolutely beautiful evocation of a heroine's journey. And we have all of these myths and stories about men having the hero's journey and not so many about women and who would have thought Disney would be the one who is really empowering women and girls now? But um, I haven't seen the movie Frozen. But um, as I understand, the, the princesses there are not um, at the effect or, or of men. They have independence and agency of their own. And in this movie, Moana, this is a young girl who's chosen to help restore the heart of Te Fiti. So just a little background in this story. The demigod Maui um, had stolen the heart of Tefiti. And at that time, then the earth started to die. So the plants started to die. The fish started to leave. And people were going hungry and starving. And on Moana's island, they had escaped this for a long time. But eventually it began to happen there. And the ocean had chosen her to go on this journey to restore the heart of Tefiti to heal the world. So she goes off on this journey to find Maui and get him to return the heart. And of course, there's much silliness. It's Disney, after all, and it's a musical. But in the end, um, Moana ends up being the one to restore the heart. Maui is unable to, and as they're coming back, they have to fight this lava monster. And Maui's been fighting the lava monster, and he has this magic hook, and the lava monster is destroying his hook, and she keeps reorganizing herself after he cuts off a hand, it comes back, etc. And Moana makes it through, finally sneaks through this opening in the rocks past the lava monster to the island where she understands she should take this little green heart and restore it. 
to Tefiti, only Tefiti isn't there. And then she'd been told to put the heart in the spiral and she turns around and looks at the lava monster and lo and behold, there is the spiral in the heart place of the lava monster. And she realizes, oh, this is Tefiti without her heart. This is what happened when the goddess's heart was taken. She became a monster. Of course, there are lots of layers to this story. But this young woman takes this heart and the ocean, which is her friend, opens a pathway for the lava monster to come to her. And she comes and to feed, to, uh, Moana sings to her, I know who you are, you know who you are. And she replaces the heart in the center of the, the lava monster's chest. And the lava monster turns into this beautiful green goddess who restores the health of the earth and plants grow on this island which had been bare. So the health of of the earth, the planet is restored. And I was just in tears over this, this because this is partly what I had seen in my Oracle vision um, just that day with my sisters. And so I've also brought through information in the past about the dark goddess and how important that aspect is. And this is something that we can sometimes get trapped in as quote unquote light workers that we always want to be looking to the light. We want to be bringing in more light. We want to be raising our vibration, our frequency, and it can tend to have the effect of making us even afraid of the dark and the dark goddess. And yet this is the yin and the yang. And this is part of being human is actually having all of our emotions and it's actually right and true and appropriate that when the heart of woman is taken, she becomes angry. It's actually appropriate. And um, in my Wise Women Immersion program yesterday, uh, we were discussing this in the context of partnership and Rianne Eisler's work on partnership and the tendency that women have to turn our anger back on ourselves and blame ourselves for things that go wrong, for things that our partners do. Uh, we apologize for our partners. We apologize when we don't even have any need to. Um, there was a poll in, I think it was Glamour magazine that uh, is cited in Rianne's book, The Power of Partnership, where women admit to, to, to apologizing over 20 times a day I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And Rianne talks about how this the turning of anger that we don't feel able to express ourselves can be turned on other women. So this reclaiming of the dark goddess is part of our needing to reclaim our own ability, our own truth, that when we are angry, very often there's a good reason that anger is not an emotion to be just stuffed and run away from, but it is to be embraced and to, for us to actually hear and understand the messages our anger has for us because anger can be a pointing emotion. It can say, here's where you need to look. Here's where you need to go next. And it's not about splattering our anger all over other people indiscriminately. It's about being responsible with it, but accepting it, honoring it as a part of who we are. And this story of Moana and the, the lava monster who turns into the, the green goddess of the earth, is, it, it has so many layers, but it reminds me too of the story of Erish Kegel and Inanna, which is an ancient story. Um, Inanna was a goddess and Erish Kegel was her sister and Erish Kegel lived under the earth. And they were estranged from each other. And Inanna 
decides to go on a journey to, to her sister. And as she goes down through the layers of earth, she loses parts of herself along the way so that by the time she gets to the bottom, essentially she's died. But her spirit is there and her spirit actually witnesses a tear on Erish Kegel's face. And she says, I see you. I see your grief. I see your pain. And in that instant, she is reborn and she regains her life. And she's able to go back to the surface. So again, it's this, I see you. I see you, which Moana says to the lava monster, which Inanna says to Erish Kegel, this witnessing of the quote unquote dark side. And what if we did this more? What if we witnessed each other in our grief and, and in our pain with, without the judgment, without the shunning? Uh, what if we could do that for each other? Just witness, I see you, I see your grief, I see your pain, I see your anger. And I still honor you and I still have love and compassion for you. And now, of course, on our earth right now, Pele is erupting on Hawaii. So the, the lava monster is, is up and the, the lava is, is destroying homes on the big island. And still people the Hawaiians are celebrating Pele and they're worshiping Pele and they honor this, this destruction and creation at the same time. Because as the lava is coming up, it can destroy things in its path. And at the same time, it's creating new land. And this is how all the Hawaiian islands were created. And the big island is the one that's still being created. So that energy of destruction and creation at the same time is to me the essence of the dark goddess and this is the essence of kali if you're familiar with the hindu goddess kali she is usually shown with with a, a belt of skulls around her waist and and with a sword in her hand and she's just killed some god i forget who who's under her foot so it's that energy of destruction, of tearing down, but it's tearing down what's no longer useful, what's not needed in order to make room for creation and the ability for us to, to begin anew. So I invite you all to really um, embrace the dark goddess and as an aspect, as a true aspect and a valuable aspect of the divine feminine, that this is something we need to actually look at, embrace, and use in our lives. And that when we do our own journey to reclaim the dark goddess for ourselves, both men and women can do this, and we all become more whole. And we do it in this way with, with the love and compassion and honoring. And then the quote unquote negative aspects are transformed. And the, the green goddess Tefiti comes back and the earth is healed. So please let me know your comments and thoughts about this. And Wisdom Wednesdays will be an ongoing series, not necessarily every Wednesday, but about three Wednesdays a month. So I'd love to hear from you what your ideas are for some topics that you would like me to discuss or information you'd like to hear me bring through as Oracle from Spirit. So I'm Ariana Newcomer, Dove Oracle Priestess. And I specialize in healing the soul's voice to joyfully express its divine purpose. And if you'd like to talk with me about private mentoring or my group program, The Wise Woman Immersion, I will pop a link into the comments and you can schedule on my calendar. 
So thank you to all who joined and all who watched this later. And I look forward to your comments and your questions. So you're also invited to submit questions for Wisdom Wednesdays. Um, and especially if you sign up to my email list, that's the easiest way. I'll also put a link in the comments where you can sign up for that. And you can email me your questions or pop them in here on the Healing the Soul's Voice page. And please like and share and comment. That helps us get more views. Thank you so much for being with me today.